In today's lesson, believers see positive consequences of merciful behavior and negative consequences of failing to live a righteous life. There are four key participants in this parable, all of whom play a role in the Last Judgment. The Son of Man who appears with all his angels, the nations or Gentiles who are divided into those who have and those who have not joined with God, the King, Jesus, and brethren are those who were once judged by man, and now judge those who judged them. The king is sitting on the throne, and the Gentiles are standing before the judge. The judgment of the sheep and goats occurs at the conclusion of the Great Tribulation to determine who may enter the kingdom of God. The basis of the judgment is the relationship of men to Christ, as demonstrated by their treatment of those in need. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. This passage of scripture is not so much a parable as it is a prophecy. It does, however, have some parabolic traits in that it details the shepherd, sheep, and goats. The point here is to describe the events of Jesus' second coming. Jews and Gentiles will not assemble in two different groups, but stand together before the judgment of the king. Once more, Jesus teaches in a context with which the Jews are familiar. Sheep and goats typically graze together in the daytime, but are separated at night. In this passage, the sheep go one way, and the goats go another. Once the sheep and goats are separated, Jesus will address the sheep, inviting them into God's kingdom. The word translated here as come is the Greek dute, which Matthew significantly used when Jesus called his disciples to follow him, and in another illustration of welcoming his followers. Jesus lists some acts of compassion that the sheep performed. The Bible is replete with such acts that his audience might recall. Rebecca giving water to the servant of Jacob, Ruth and Naomi receiving provision in Boaz's field, Abraham and Sarai providing shelter for the three angelic beings in the wilderness, the prophet Elisha visiting the widow woman and her son. These stories all serve as narrative testimonies of righteous people performing the law of God in the Torah, to care for the needy of society. Jesus here reminds people of something they already knew, the command to keep the law of God. But he adds the weight that to keep the law and care for God's people is to care for the Son of God himself. The need for compassion still exists today, and many people clothe the hungry, satisfy the thirsty, house the homeless, clothe the destitute and visit the sick and imprisoned, but the service is just as crucial as the motivation behind it. Some people get involved because of tax benefits, a guilty conscience, or obligations within a group or organization. Neither the sheep nor the goats appeared puzzled by their destination, but seemed bewildered by the reason for going there. None of them expected to live or die based on how they, were, how they treated Jesus because they did not think they ever had the opportunity. But because the goats chose not to serve those in need, they were condemned to death. Here's our lesson. Many people are not aware of the good they do through the Holy Spirit, and many don't recognize the chance to love as Christ loved and to serve Him by serving others. Furthermore, some people believe they are sheep when God sees them as goats. Jesus reiterates that the service done unto others is also done unto him. If anyone masks a deed of goodwill behind an expectation of selfish gain, it carries no spiritual value. If we do spiritual works and perform religious rituals, but neglect the needs of people in our communities, we have missed the mark of our call in Christ. Our service to our fellow man is not just leftover charity for those who are destitute, but an act of service to Christ himself. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.